Hey, what's going on guys? Today, I have a no bullshit guide, very quick, no nonsense guide for the Harvest of Ghosts event coming to Hunt Showdown. We're gonna go over the weapons, new traits, and then we're gonna talk about the brand new game mode at the end. Very, very cool. All right, guys, this is the Maynard Sniper. This is a brand new medium ammo weapon that only comes in the Sniper variant at the moment. It comes with Dum Dum, high velocity, and it's base default ammo. With high velocity, you have 170 meters drop range, regular ammo, 160, and 145 with Dum Dum. This weapon is surprisingly cheap at only 139. So with this high damage of 144 and the cheap price of 139, this is definitely gonna be a weapon that I think we're gonna see lots of people running and lots of people quick scoping with. All right, the pocket auto crown and king. This is just a crown and king that can one tap up to 10 meters, just like most of the medium shotguns. And, uh, yeah, not much more to say about it. Only four shots instead of five because of the shorter size. All right, up next, rival mace hand cannon. Just a short, short rival with the little mace on the end. It does blunt damage, so it'll be good against all the bosses. And uh, not much else to say about it. It's the same as regular rival hand cannon, 10 meter one tap range. Melee is a little bit weird on it, but uh, there you go, $135 as well, pretty cheap. All right, this one is a little weird. It is a miniature bomb lance without the lance. So this is not a melee weapon. It is purely a projectile firing catapult, whatever you want to call it. It shoots all the normal ammo types that the bomb lance can shoot. So you got the, door, the default, the steel balls, the wax charges, and the dragon's breath. But there is a new one called the harpoon, which is pretty much just a crossbow arrow. Think of it like that. You can't really back in or anything like that. I was really hoping you could when I heard about it. But uh, you can retrieve the ammo, just like a crossbow. I, I would say the damage is very similar to the crossbow, but it probably has a lot more drop. And yes, it does cause bleed. And you can shoot somebody and pull it out, just like you could with any other sort of arrow-like uh, weapon in the game. And it does extra damage, obviously. So there you go. All right, the Centennial Marksman. It's a medium slot Marksman Centennial Shorty, but they're calling it the Centennial Pointman. Not much to say about it. I'm excited to have a Marksman scope on the Centennial. I like the gun a lot, and Marksman scope is arguably the best scope in the game because it kind of gives you both. So yeah, this is cool. Everybody saw this in the trailer and they started losing their mind. This is the Healing Bolt. It is on the hand crossbow and it heals you. Your teammates, if you can shoot them with it, you cannot heal yourself with it, sadly. I was hoping you could. And if you shoot their body when they are downed, it will revive them. So, pretty cool. And from what I noticed, it doesn't really seem to have that much drop on it. Just a little bit. Kind of like the normal arrow, I would say. Maybe a little bit better, even. Alright, this one's kind of cool. It's a new consumable, and it is a C4. It's a big dynamite bundle that you can put down on the ground. It makes a very loud noise that the enemies will be able to hear. So dying to this is probably going to be really not that common. It's going to be more so like trying to clear it out or just avoiding it and going a different route. This might just be kind of like a blocker, but you interact with it in dark sight and it goes kaboom. I'm not quite sure if enemies can interact with your satchels or not. Um, that is to be figured out when the patch comes out, but you can place them on walls too, since we got the trap rework on the like the alert mines, for example. We can put them on walls now, and that means these two. So we can put these on the walls. This is going to be really good. You're going to not want to ever put these on the floor. You're going to want to put these in, in places where it blocks a doorway, kind of like how I'm doing here. But the enemies won't be able to clear it out unless they run in and... Or unless they throw a, throw a nade to counter it. It's kind of the only way. Unless... The enemies can interact with your satchels. I'm not sure how it works yet. So we will have to wait and see on that one. But yeah, these are pretty cool. And I'm going to have a ton of fun. And you can chain react them. I have tested it. It's very cool. Alright, this event brings three packs to the game. The Omens, which is a new one. Wilderness and Smugglers, two that we already know. But there are some changes and some new stuff. So let's go over it. 
The Omens brings a new trait called Blast Sense and is adding on to Pain Sense, formerly known as Poison Sense, except now Pain Sense lets you see bleeding, burning, and poison in Dark Sight. And during the event, you can see if people are low on stamina. Don't think that's ever going to be useful. Blast Sense, also not a cool trait. It sounds really dope, but it only allows you to see loud gunshots and explosions in Dark Sight. Not sure if it works on silencers, I imagine not, but it kind of does that same effect as the uh, Dark Satchels, so that's kind of what it looks like. Kind of useless. Surefoot is returning for the Wilderness Pack with some changes, and Beast Face is the conditional. You will not be affected by any wildlife, so you, you can just run through everything. Dogs, chickens, crows, whatever. Surefoot it now allows us to sprint with all throwables first aid kits and consumables so now throwing knives throwing axes and the spear because the spear also cannot sprint anymore forgot to mention that and you also move faster while crouching i should also mention lightfoot it now has crouch walk without making any noise for solo players only so it has the old surefoot passive attached to lightfoot now permanently in the game forever until they change it smuggler is returning with gunrunner which received some changes, and Greyhound is the buffed up trait for this event. You now sprint faster while carrying a bounty with Greyhound, which is going to be sweet. And I think everyone's going to play Smuggler because of Gunrunner. What Gunrunner does is allows you to hold two large slot weapons instead of only one large and a medium. So now you can hold double Mosin, double Avdo, double Nitro, Avdo, Crown, Mosin Crown, Vetterly Centennial, uh, Vetterly Winfield, whatever you want. Slate Winfield, it's going to be sweet. This is how the game was in 2018. That's what Quartermaster used to do. You could hold two large slot rather than a large and a medium. And uh, yeah, it's going to be sweet. I'm super hyped for this. I think Smuggler is going to be the most played one for sure. Maybe people will play uh, Wilderness, but I think Blast Sense, or I'm sorry. Omens is going to be uh, thrown under the bus during this event, sadly. And of course, we have a battle pass, obviously. So I'm going to show you just some of the stuff. I'm going to let you guys, you know, explore it on your own time and check out all the skins in detail on your own. I'm just showing what I thought looks cool. And just give you guys a quick little glance at the battle pass. All right, Bounty Clash is quite literally Hunt Showdown, Bounty Hunt, but in short form format for people that just want to practice or get better or whatever. It is one compound, an already dead boss, and guaranteed action. There's going to be 12 people on it, just like the regular game, and it is match made with trios in mind. So there is no duo matchmaking. You can play solo, duo, and trio, but you cannot select only match against duos like you can in Bounty Hunt. This is meant to be a you know, free-for-all brawl game mode, and I think it's going to play out pretty good. We'll have to see how the spawns are. I think that's a big concern that I'm going to have. It is 15 minutes, and like I said, 12 players, so it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. It could promote a lot of problems, like camping, the extracts, or just like letting the server die, and letting the people have the bounty not extract, things like that. But, it's going to be pretty fun, I think, and a nice thing about it is that after the boss is banished, let's say you push in and, and you know, you go down, but your teammates res you, there's a banish in the, at the boss layer, so there's... Pretty much infinite banishes as long as you have pledge marks, which you'll be earning by killing people, looting people, doing the, you know, banishing, whatever. So, yeah, this game mode is going to be pretty crazy. You do lose your hunters and gear that you bring in if you do end up going down. So, maybe run a couple free hunters to kind of figure out the spawns and the game mode and, and see how you like it. So you, and you do have to take the bounty to an extract, and there's a circle on the map. That indicates the play zone, and if you go out of it, you will die. So there's one big problem with Bounty Clash at the moment. It is only available for the first four days of the event, and then after that, it is only Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every single weekend until the end of the event. So there is effectively like 25 or 26 days that you can only play this event, and of course that is only on the weekend. This might be an issue for some people, um, and I really don't like that about this. I wish that you could play it whenever you wanted, but I guess Crytek is scared about player count and numbers and stuff like that. So yeah, it is what it is. All right, that's going to do it, guys. This is the Bounty Clash game mode. 
and all of the update coming in Harvest of Ghost. It is running from October 16th until November 25th. I'm excited for this update. I think there's a lot of cool, interesting things happening with this one. So I'm looking forward to it. If you guys learned anything in this video and you know appreciated this, this information I put together, it did take me a long time to make. I sat down over the course of like, I, I sat down for like six hours and just grinded this video out. I wanted to keep it short and sweet and simple. And I, I, I didn't want it to go over 15 or 20 minutes. So I think I achieved that. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking it out. Thanks for giving me your eyeballs. Thanks for lending me your time. I hope you guys enjoyed the event. And I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks so much. Take it easy. Peace.